Hey folks, Chad Perkins for Red Giant. This is the second tutorial in this training series on trap code form. In this tutorial, we're going to just start from scratch and learn the very basics of form, including what we call the base form. We'll also look at adjusting its dimensions, shape, and resolution. We'll also take a look at the particles themselves. We'll then wrap up with a little project where we'll use form to add stars to this 3D galaxy scene. Now I have here just a plain old basic composition. My settings here, in case you're curious, 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second, nothing special. I'm gonna right click in the timeline panel, create a new solid, make it the comp size, click okay. And now we can apply form to it. Now I prefer to go to effects and presets and do a search for form and apply it this way. But a lot of people like to go to the effect menu and make sure that the layer is selected and the timeline panel is highlighted. Now we go up to the effect menu, go to RG trap code and choose form. Now a lot of new users are intimidated by this when they first see this. It doesn't look super magical, it's not very impressive and it's kind of confusing. It doesn't make sense really what's going on. So let me break this down for you and actually to do that, I'm gonna create a new comp camera. I'm just gonna go to my timeline panel, right click new camera and use the default settings, click OK. And now I'm going to use the unified camera tool and click and drag around, because this is actually in 3D. And this is now much easier to understand what's going on. You see, form has two components, two main components, the base form and the particles. So if I zoom in here, we'll see that there's actually a bunch of little dots here, a bunch of little spheres. And these are the particles and they're arranged in a grid, a 3D grid. The shape of the grid is referred to as the base form. I like to think of this kind of like building a house, like the particles are bricks and you can arrange bricks in any shape you want. So the particles are like bricks and the shape of the house or the shape of the building is like the base form. Now I'm gonna go back to form here. I'm gonna open up base form so we can adjust its properties. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave my camera angle all screwy like that because it's easier to see what's going on. So we have a bunch of different shapes for base form. By default, it's set to grid, as we can see here. We also have a few other options such as strings, where instead of using particles per se, it uses actually a solid string, which is interesting. There's also a sphere. So now our, our particles are layered in a sphere and not in a grid. And finally, we have OBJ model, which allows you to use a 3D object for your form. Now this is kind of a special thing, so we'll talk about this a couple tutorials down the road, but we are going to definitely talk about it because it's an extremely cool feature of form. Now just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna go back to box grid, and we can see our grid here. And let's talk about some of these attributes. We can change the size of the base form. Now by default, this is linked. So XYZ is all one parameter. So it just scales up uniformly. But I find it's very often uh, helpful to change this from XYZ linked to XYZ individual. So you have access to the size X independently of the size Y and the size Z. Now again, I realize it still isn't much to look at just yet, but just hang in here. Like it's, it's one of these things that really pays off. You invest a little bit. It's like Bitcoin five years ago, you know, put in a little bit and you're going to get a lot. So just hang in there. Now I'm going to take this back to uh, XYZ link just so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. And here, this uh, particles in X, Y, and Z, this is really where we control kind of like the resolution of the base form. So as I take particles in X down, you see we have less particles in X until we can get just kind of these interesting like columns of dots. And it's adjusting these properties that makes form so useful for creating uh, heads up display elements, which we'll look at at a later movie in this training series. We could also uh, increase or decrease the particles in Y. And I'm gonna bring this back up again a little bit, like kind of like we had it originally. If I change this to one, you can see we now only have one particle in Z. So we have one sheet of particles, like just one flat grid, or we can increase this to something very dense until we have almost like a, a 3D cube. Just for now, I'm gonna take the particles in Z down to one, just so it's really clear and obvious what we're looking at here. And I'll zoom in a little bit as well. And we have some standard parameters. You know, we have the position of the form. We also have rotation of the whole form. 
Now, we're not going to talk about OBJ settings in this tutorial as we talked about, and we're not going to talk too much about string settings as well. But be aware that these properties will be completely grayed out unless you choose strings or OBJ settings as your base form. So as I choose box strings, then we get the properties for the, uh, the strings. I'm just going to close that up, take this back to box grid. Now let's talk about the particles themselves. I'm going to zoom in here again so we could see a little bit more closely. Open up. I'm actually going to close part, uh, base form, open up particle. Um, it's. I find that it's very helpful to do that. It's good housekeeping because there's so many parameters in a lot of these trap code plugins that if you just leave everything open, it just starts to look like um, my bedroom in high school. Just a, just a, a complete mess. So I gotta, you got to tidy things up a little bit. Now we can change the particle type. By default, it's set to sphere. We could set this to glow sphere. We could set this to star. And there's other things like cloudlet and some really interesting shapes that we can get by changing this particle to different things. We'll talk in a later tutorial about how you can use one of these sprite options or texture polygon options to use your own custom image as a particle, which is very powerful as you can imagine. Now I'm gonna go back to star here. You'll notice that glow sphere and star both say no DOF. That means no depth of field. That means if you were to use them in a 3D scene and you were to use depth of field from your comp camera, these options would not have depth of field. It would still be a glow sphere and still be a star. But these other options would have depth of field applied. So just be aware of that. I'm gonna choose star for right now. And we can't really see, it looks like a grid almost. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to my base form and take down the particles in X and Y. So we have a little bit more space between these particles and see what's going on a little bit more. There you go. Close up base form. I find that when I'm working with form and particular as well, I kind of have to keep going back and forth between the shape of the object that's emitting the particles, or in this case, the base form and uh, the particles themselves. Now, another thing we're going to say for a later tutorial in this series is op these uh, opacity over, uh, color over, uh, the opacity curve. There's these kind of quick maps that are built into form that kind of deserve their own tutorial. So we'll talk about those later, but those are extremely powerful. This white is getting uh, irritating. So I'm going to change my color. I'm going to click this color swatch, and I'll change this to something like maybe um, a pale orange. For some of these particle types, like star, we can add a glow here. It's kind of built in. So we can increase the size of the glow or the opacity of the glow. And that adds some interesting effects as well. And we have some basic parameters but that are just really good to be aware of. For example, we have the size of the each particle. And one of the most important properties you'll see throughout form is just randomness. So as I increase size random, you see what happens here. We have some of these disappear and all of a sudden this looks a lot more organic. We could also do the same thing with opacity random and increase the randomness, the opacity and have some of these disappear, some of these be faded. And the last thing I wanna talk about in this section before we get to our little project is rotation. So um, a lot of these properties like size, size random, opacity, they're very obvious. Their value is right here, but size or rotation, excuse me, is a category in and of itself that contains multiple properties. So it's worth opening that up and seeing all that you have here. You can actually increase the rotation speed Z. As I preview this, you can see that we kind of get some randomness in the rotation of our stars. And maybe I'll take that down a little bit. Let's say take that down to two and maybe increase a little bit rotate, maybe increase the randomness of the speed rotate. And then now as I play this back, we have just kind of these stars rotating in random ways. I'll just zoom in really quick so you can see that a little bit easier. There's that. So this one's just going crazy. This one's just kind of like a little clock there. Really interesting. Now, let's actually build something. I'm gonna go over here to this uh, galaxy scene here. This is uh, some beautiful art that I'm actually using in the training series as well, some of those graphics you might have seen. And uh, this is some amazing art from my buddy, Joanna Smart, who's an amazing designer and painter and illustrator. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and um, create another solid for the form layer. And by the way, this galaxy scene, it's a 3D scene. These layers are in 3D, and there also is a 3D camera flying through the scene. So if I scrub this over a minute, you can see that the camera is pushing in. You can kind of see the, I thought, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and you can see the, the layer boundaries here as I scrub in time, the camera's actually pushing in. That will come into play later. So 
save that away in your memory banks. Okay, so now I'm going to go to layer, new, solid, and I'm going to call this layer form, make sure it's comp size, and click OK. And now I'm going to again go to effect, and I'll just apply form as the last effect I applied, so I'll go ahead and click form to apply that here. And what we want to do is make a 3D star field with this. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer so we can see what's going on a little bit better. And the base form is where we want to start usually. And I do want a grid. This is great. But I want this to be spread out. I want these particles really to go deep, far back on the z-axis. So um, changing x, y, and z together is not going to work. So I'm going to change this from uh, the size from x, y, z linked to x, y, z individual. And then I'll make the size x really wide, the size y enough to cover the screen, and then some. And then I also want to take up size z a lot, like in the thousands, maybe 4,000. Now, this kind of grid look is not going to work for an organic star field. I mean, this is too geometric and it doesn't look like anything like stars. So we're going to use another attribute of form called disperse. So if you come down to disperse and twist, open up disperse and twist, there's a disperse value. So I'm going to increase the disperse value, which will create some random dispersion in these particles. And I could crank that up quite a bit here. And then when I let go, you see we actually have a lot of great randomness. This kind of looks a lot like a star field. So these particles are a little bit too close. And so we can fiddle with that in a couple of ways. If they're actually too close to the camera, we can go to the position value in base form and push them back. And that's actually what I'm going to do here. But I could also, I mean, I think they're probably a good amount of distance back here, but uh, they're still a little bit too big. So what I could do is get some help from the particle area. So I'm going to close up Disperse and Twist. I'm going to close up Base Form, Open Particle. And let's change Size Random. Increase that quite a bit. That makes a big difference. And maybe we take down the size of the particles. Maybe we take down the size of the stars to 1. Well, now that looks maybe a little bit too small. So we can actually type in a fractional value here, like 1.5. And that's a good mix in between there. And I might still back this up maybe a little bit. Just send it back a little bit further. But what's really cool is that there weren't really any depth cues in this scene before. Everything is kind of on the same plane, even though it's layered 3D stuff. Um, everything kind of needed to be uh, pretty close to each other. So we don't have anything like really close to the camera. And so not only does this uh, trap code form stuff uh, really add a lot to our scene and make it look more believable, but it also adds a lot of depth to make our scene more engaging. And I know this is just a simple example. We're just getting started in this series, but you can really see the benefits of trap code form here because most other particle systems, they're going to generate particles that are going to die out, but form particles just live. They continue to exist. And that allows us for stuff like this for stars that wouldn't die out in the course of 30 seconds or a minute or whatever, that allows us to use this great tool for this purpose, which is really cool. So now if I back this up, you can see now like we're moving into space and that is just awesome. As I scrub this, now yeah, pretty low quality here because we got a lot of uh, 3D layers going on, um, but we get a lot of dimension out of these stars. And you know, maybe that's moving too fast. Maybe we wanna push that back a little bit. Maybe we wanna take the stars down a little bit more. Maybe we wanna increase the size Z to spread those out. So we can fiddle with this to taste, but essentially that's our star field. And again, because these particles are in 3D, all you have to do is put a camera in your scene. And once you move the camera, these particles, these form particles will move in 3D space. It's pretty phenomenal. Also be sure to not take the layer and put that into 3D. It just works at uh, 3D as is. Now, another thing that you could do here um, is go into form in your effect controls panel. I'm going to click away to deselect it and then click it again to select it. And I could press the keyboard shortcut command D on the Mac or control D on the PC to duplicate this effect. So now I actually have two versions of form. And what actually happens initially is that this top duplicate completely replaces the old duplicate. So there's the, the uh, first form isn't being seen. We could take off the visibility and we don't really see a change. So what we need to do is come down here to the bottom, this duplicate form two, and I'm going to go down to rendering at the very bottom. 
and change the blend mode from none to normal. And now we'll have both copies. Now, what can you do with that? Well, what I can do is let's say we take down the particles in X down to like 20 and maybe particles in Y down to 20. So we have much fewer particles here. Well, now I could change the particle type to star. So we just kind of have a few of these kind of um, shining stars with the spikes. Maybe that's too much. Maybe we 10 by 10. So we just have a few of them and maybe we make them a little bit bigger. Maybe we actually make them two. Uh, maybe we bring them a little bit closer. Just so we have a few of these little spikes here for variation. And we can do a quick render, and there's our scene. Now, in the next tutorial in this series, we're going to take form a lot farther. We're going to talk about using fractal fields to distort our form particles. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you there. Shout out to Pond5 for all the super dope music I used in this tutorial. Mm -hmm.